Hi there. This week's guest is known for both her business acumen and her extraordinary personal style. We're going to be talking about both and exclusively we're going to be revealing a secret that will definitely surprise you and <laughs> might even shock you. Everyone, please welcome Claire Murphy, this week's guest on Sunday Girl. Claire, before we spill your secret, okay, <laughs> so keep watching everyone, before we spill your secret, tell everybody a little bit about Claire Murphy. Okay, uh, we'll start at the beginning. At the beginning. I was born and reared in Tralee, County Kerry. I have three brothers and two sisters. Uh, lived in Tralee up to, until my teens. And then we moved to this beautiful Valley Hike. So mid-teens, whole family moved out here. I have great memories of summers spent swimming in the ocean and diving off rocks in uh, the Belongs back the road and summers cycling around Kerry Head. Just wonderful memories. After finishing the Leaving Cert, my father uh, suggested that I work in his accountancy firm. Mm -hmm. I had just started uh, third level education and uh, I decided, okay, jobs are hard to come by. So I left that and started in my father's accountancy business, which I worked in for 20 years. I was like his right hand woman for that length of time. I'd say you were the most glamorous accountant in, in, in Kerry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't an accountant, but I was definitely his right hand woman. I was uh, basically his private secretary as okay. such okay. and uh, loved working for him. Uh, it was an honor to work for him. He was lovely, lovely man, uh, spent all his time on his family and work. And uh, he was he loved greyhounds as well. Mm -hmm. He was big into greyhounds. So I worked there for 20 years and loved it. But then I'd say in my mid twenties, I had this thing about uh, far away hills could be greener. So I took off to the States and I spent a year and a half over there did a lot of traveling, uh, was working in Midtown Manhattan for a year, Okay. loved it. And I don't regret going there. I think I learned a lot of lives, life's lessons. And of course came back then and back to work for my dad. So we're now going to talk a little bit about Claire Murphy and your personal style, because I remember Claire, I was working in Kerry Group and um, I was really lucky that they um, asked me to go to the Rose Bowl. I was really, I was quite a young one, I think I was in my early 20s. And I was really excited about it. And I walked in, the, it was held in the Brandon Carberg at the time. Oh, that's right, in the dome. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I remember going in and it was the first time I actually saw you. And you just, I mean, you just radiated glamour. <laughs> you were like a Hollywood star. Oh, and I remember saying to my friends at the time, I remember saying, who's that? And they said, that's Claire. <laughs> and afterwards, I remember meeting you at different fashion events, at mm -hmm. different shows. And then when we set up our own business, you were, I, I think, always the first person to support us to buy a ticket. Um, mm -hmm. You're a huge supporter of fashion. But I first want to talk about your own love of fashion and where did that come from? Okay, I would say that my love of fashion came from my mother. My mother um, is 86 now, but I remember as a child always loving her style. She wore beautiful suits. She was always well, very well dressed head to toe. I loved her accessories. Through the years of uh, a pinch me moment in style would have been the 2012 um, Oscars when I saw Gwyneth Paltrow come out in this white gown with the cape. Do you remember that? I thought that was just amazing. So I got to get to know uh, the local designers and we have one just down the road here. Literally, you can see 
his house from from right here, John O'Neill. So he would be my favourite designer of all time. And I love the way you say the local designers because John, of course, he's from Ballyhaig. He always says Ballyhaig has given him the inspiration for all his collections. And yet he has wowed the world, dressed everyone from Oprah to Meghan Markle Absolutely. to Taylor Swift. Absolutely. He got married actually right behind us on the other side That's right, five years ago. Them. That's right. And actually, we met. We were at you were at that wedding as well. That's right. Yeah, we that were was here. wonderful. A great, wonderful occasion. Fabulous wedding. Yeah. John and Pascal's wedding. Yeah, full of love and joy and fun. And fun. Yeah. Yes. And glamour, of course. Yes. That was a great day, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, it was brilliant. Yeah. yeah it was fantastic. absolutely brilliant. Fantastic. And of course you have other designers living close to you here as well. Yes, we do. My, another of my favourite would be Conan Horgan. He's from Arkford. Fantastic designer. Actually, I remember one Horgan. morning, uh, I think I was away on my holiday. I think I was in Donegal or something. And I opened up the Irish Times and there was Claire Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> Having just won the best dressed lady at one of the most prestigious events in the country, the Dublin Horse Show. Hi, tell us a little bit about that moment and what you were wearing. Okay, that was uh, five years ago. And uh, I remember actually that pinch me moment dress. I wanted to design something similar to that in cream with a cape. I'm a big fan of capes. And I went to Clarglen to Tina Griffin, who is one of my favorite designers. And I said, okay, Tina, we've got to design something special. So four trips later, the Dublin Horse Show outfit appeared. So we, I headed to Dublin with the girls. We meet every year in Dublin for the Horse Show. We get dressed up and we catch up on the year past and just have a, an escape from regular life for one day. You know, I'm from Dublin myself originally and I came here because I wanted to. Um, I would have only dressed in black. <laughs> yeah, I can doubt wear black. <laughs> it was like I didn't wear black and neutrals and very mm. paired back, you know. And I think after a couple of years here, when um, we were running events and we were bringing people down, yes. people used to say to me, you wouldn't know all I wear when I come. And I was like, listen, you're coming to the kingdom of style, okay? So yeah. think like a kingdom and wear yeah. colour, colour, wear mm -hmm. embellishments, dress up. Yes. And you know, that's something that over the years like has rubbed off on me as well. Yes. Yes. Is that I love colour and mm -hmm. that comes from from Kerry. I think yeah, so. That yeah. there is a very strong style. I mean, Kerry's famous for football. It is. It's Kerry, it's famous for scenery, but it is equally famous for its, you know, it is. It yeah, is. There are a lot style. of very styles. And we're just lucky to get you here today because most days <laughs> of the week you are working in Expose, a really successful hair and beauty business with three separate um, different stores. Um, here in Kerry and you've won multiple awards. Tell us a little bit about that and how you got into it. Well, it all started uh, about uh, 2008. It's actually my husband, William, who saw that there was uh, a need for a salon on the outskirts of Tralee that would be easily accessible and uh, free parking. Mm -hmm. So the opportunity arose. Uh, there was a building in Mount Hawk so in 20, 2008, we opened up uh, Expose Hair Salon. Then after that, uh, a couple of years later, 2017, we opened in Kilflin. In the middle of a pandemic, we opened Expose Fires, which thankfully is very successful. An enormous success. And I know because I live very close to it and it's hugely appreciated in our area because we used to feel very neglected that we had to go to Colorado or Trilly to get hair and beauty needs. So, I mean, you're really, you're really a businesswoman that's intuitive and also looks into the future and anticipates needs. Yes. And that's why you're so successful as well. Well, I think the success comes from our team. Mm -hmm. We have a fantastic team of managers in all three salons and we couldn't operate without them. So Claire, okay, tell us something that nobody knows about you. Tell us a secret. Okay, I think something that not a lot of people would know about me 
is that in my 20s and 30s, I was mad into caraveling. <laughs> mad. I could be found at the side of a mountain, up Moll's Gap, Connor Pass, anywhere in Kerry with my friend Anne. We were actually involved in the rallying process. We were, uh, we used to do the timekeeping at the start of the rally or end of the rally. I believe that Claire Murphy was into rallying. <laughs> I was into rallying. And, and did you ever, did you actually ever rally? <laughs> I didn't drive, but I was a navigator once. Okay. And uh, that story we might leave for another day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one, but it's a long one. Um, and actually through rallying, that's how I met William, my husband. Okay. He was the chairman of the Kerry Motor Club and I was the secretary. So that's how we met through rallying. And in 1993, we married and eight years later, our daughter Claudia arrived on the scene. So it's been a bit of a whirlwind. We have one other um, big secret to reveal and um, it's something very special that's happening next year. And I know fashion lovers like myself um, listen up because you will definitely want to put this date into your diary. Tell us all, Claire. Okay, well, uh, a year ago, my father passed away and he passed away inside in the palliative care unit in Tralee. So just before he passed, I promised him that I would do a fundraiser with all funds going to the palliative care. So I thought, what would I organise? You know, what, what would I be, make money from? So I thought, you know, follow your passion. My passion is fashion. So I decided I will organize an event that would be a fashion show and a luncheon. And it would be based in somewhere that meant something to my father. Mm -hmm. So we watch the space with this. If you were to talk to your younger self, um, what advice would you give her now? I think I would say to her, your road ahead is not going to be a straight one. There'll be lots of turns and twists along the way. And I would say, enjoy the good times, embrace the tough times, but definitely learn from those tough times. Take something out of it. I would say, trust your gut instinct. If it doesn't feel right, it probably isn't right. Don't do it. I would say be kind to everybody you meet in your life because you just don't know what the person next to you is going through. And I think on a lighter note, I would say wear SPF, <laughs> wear your smile, mind your teeth and wear some colour. <laughs> I love you, Claire. <laughs> and at every single opportunity, have fun if you have can. Have fun doing yeah. it. Have yes. fun doing it. Yes. Claire, you are just a delight. Thank you so much for joining all of us on This Week Find a Girl. Thank you. For and me. from both of us, we wish you a wonderful, light and fun-filled week.